It's a, a people, it's a community, it's a life, it's a heart, it's a spirit. Uh, parents of gay children say, I want my son, my gay son, to have the same <laughs> opportunity to come to me and say, hey dad, I'm getting married, as my non-gay son or my non-gay daughter. The heck would you want a picture of a tattoo of a thousand dollars on your penis for? So you might just need to satisfy yourself sexually alone at that point. Do I regret it? Not one bit. Did I think that I would actually take it to the next step and, and do it again? Uh, I... <laughs> and what goes into their life, how they handle it. There are 12 houses, and each one of those houses has a particular function. Look into yourself, think about it, and just be whoever it is that speaks to you. And welcome to another episode of Talking About. I'm your host, JC Alvarez, and I'm so happy to have with us today one of my favorite comedians, I didn't know I was one of your favorites. Well, you're one of my you're one of my favorites. I love comedians. As I have a really good relationship okay. with comedians, mm -hmm. and I certainly I certainly love your humor. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I just love you. So, so well, there we go. Well, you know, <laughs> I do. I try and I do my best. But you know what? We should all be in a really really good mood. Yes. This week, because you know, finally, it's happened. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, as as minorities that we are, you mm -hmm. must you must have your own your own take on on you know this this historic moment. Well, it's a very historic moment, actually. You know what I what I find very interesting now is, is that in spite of all of this, is, it, when you talk about like the community at large, it's like, on one hand, I'm very happy as a black man going, yay, this is great, fantastic, <laughs> but then. You know, you get the other election results that happened that day, and you're oh. kind of like, um, yeah, well, it kind of sucks to be gay. Well, it's, like, it's almost so like two steps forward and three steps back. Three steps and back. It, and it ain't a Paula Abdul song we're uh, talking for about. For real. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> what happened it's, to her? She's just falling apart, isn't she? You know, anyway. Well, well, anyway. About, <laughs> Forget about her. It's about me. <laughs> it's about you, absolutely. But it's like, you know, it, it is a very celebratory and a really, really happy time. Right. For us right now, and we should be, you know, counting on our comedians to bring us lots and lots of joy. But it's a lot of work for us, man. <laughs> what do you want? Well, you want us to do everything now? Well, what What's is that about? What is your thing? Because all comedians have their thing. What is what is sort of like your comedy? Like? Well, you know, mine is I, I'm much more like autobiographical mm -hmm. in terms of the things that I try to bring to the stage. It's more like my own experiences, and then. The twist is, is that it's more of my perspective mm. because of how I've gr been grown, uh, have been um, raised, and the way I look at the world. So it's kind of like it's observational and autobiographical, and then I try to stay on top of what's happening in the world. Like you know, for example, you know, the big talk has been because uh, you know I, I grew up in Texas and okay. I was part of the, you know the Southern Black community, but I'm also Latino también, and so. It's really hard to like look at everything from one place, and then you throw the gay thing on top whole, of it. It's just like people. I'm a whole mix in one. And so, <laughs> like my favorite thing is, is like right now, you know, looking at the the uh, the current situation that we're in now with right. our black president. Right. Um, I think to myself, it's like, well, you know, on one hand, people are saying it's now, you know, as a black person in America, you have no excuses. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve. But then on the other hand, I can still play the gay card. <laughs> Like, so I think from now on, I'm no longer going to be black. I'm just gay. So whatever <laughs> benefits I can squeeze out of America, that's what I'm going to go for. And clearly after the election, there's nothing there. But again, <laughs> go ahead. No, it's really, it's really fantastic. So you grew so up in Texas. I grew up in Texas, okay. yeah. All of your life? Or um, actually, I, it's, it's weird. I was born in New York, but I grew up in Texas. A lot I moved of people to do Texas. That, yeah, I, I moved to Texas when I was six. I should say I was kidnapped to Texas when I was six. And Not like a, like a camp kind of thing. Well, you know, it's called your parents and <laughs> they need to move because their job situation's all weird. Anyway, and so I left with them and then 22 years later I moved back and I've been you in escaped. New York. Yeah, well, <laughs> running to freedom, honey. <laughs> Chala Amtrak looked like the Underground Railroad. I remember when I left. I was like, ooh, please. I have a beer too, you know, because <laughs> it's modern now. We're modern. How was it like uh, growing up in Texas compared to like New York City? So compared to New York City, like see, I got just like a little taste of New York before I left. Mm. So the beauty of moving to, to places like Texas or you know Kansas or anything like that is, is that you realize that there is still a world outside. Oh, you yeah, know, like yeah. there's a whole vast level of experiences that are waiting to be had. Mm. Whereas like when you're in Texas, you kind of just go, oh. <laughs> so I'm supposed to make this work, right? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like, what am I supposed to do here? So that must have been a lot of your inspiration for your comedy. Did you decide yeah. to go into comedy uh, when you were young? Did you know right away that you would be a comedian? You know, no, actually, I think I, I, I realized that I wanted to be a comedian like when I was in my 20s. Mm. Because actually, I'm still in my 20s. <laughs> well, I just thought you were. Because <laughs> we put powder on earlier. Um, <laughs> get my good side, girl, get my good side. <laughs> Um, but you know, it was funny because it was the motivating factor to become a comedian. I remember, it's like I've always had a jovial sense mm. of humor. I was always kind of witty. It's like, it's funny now because lots of my friends who I haven't talked to, you know, thanks to Facebook, you find people, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, 15, Amazing. 20 years, they're yeah. like, oh my God, what are you doing? Oh my God, I can't believe it, what do you do? <laughs> and so, when I tell them now that I'm a comedian, they all say the same thing. It's like, oh, we so can see that. Like, that was so you when you were, and I was like, really? They're like, yeah, you were always so funny. And I was like, really? I so you, like, you took to the stage immediately, right? Um, it, it took a while, mm. but you know the thing is, is that what I, I did because it's sort of like it's kind of like the rule in the black community. Okay. Because being you know when you're living in Texas at, at, in during the '70s, it's been seen. I'm still 20, <laughs> but during the '70s, <laughs> um, you do the math. You know, <laughs> chis chism bop. Remember that with the hands. <laughs> um, but what I I got out of it at, at the time was is that you really couldn't walk away from the fact that you looked African American. Mm, mm. So like, you know, I had to kind of put my, my Latin culture side, put it to the side mm -hmm. in order to kind of maintain a life there. So we, I grew up in the church. And so what I did was my performance things, just like all the big divas. <laughs> I sang in choir too, I was in the choir. <laughs> you know, Jennifer Hudson, whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I was in the choir mm. and I, I you know, did the Easter programs and you did all of the things. And there was a moment I realized that the job that I really wanted was I wanted to be the host of all the events because mm. you know, it was always some teenager that was all, you know, all older and you know, they were more poised. Very and I came fine, in and I came in and I was like, I want that job. And so I campaigned until I was a preteen, until I got the job and then of course, I was the best host ever at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. At the, at the what? At the Moriah? Mount, Mount, Mount Moriah Missionary <laughs> Baptist Church. <laughs> Reverend E.L. Gates was my pastor. <laughs> Rest in peace, Mr. Gates. And, and what were some of the duties you had to do? I mean, Well, you know, you, you basically were the person that formatted and introduced everybody ah. For their each each of the Easter speeches or their Christmas speeches, and you had your own spin on it. And that. then I had my own moment. <laughs> I learned how to play piano so I could take time for a solo. It was great, it, but you know, but that's where I kind of learned how to handle myself in front of people. Right. And then eventually it was sort of like, you kind of tap into a little bit of the theater thing, but mm -hmm. I was so afraid um, when I was growing up and going to high school that I didn't want to get labeled like, you know, because I wasn't really sure about my sexuality either at okay. that age. I knew I was different, but I didn't know. Well, you know, yeah, you don't, young people you don't know. You know the trans especially young people growing up in the 70s and right. 80s. It, it, it's not like today, where it's like a really easy transition. Yeah, like everybody knew, 15, I'm gay. Yeah. Yeah. You are? Like, wow, good <laughs> you. Like, I could never do it. God bless you. But you know, but I grew up in Texas, and it wasn't, that wasn't the kind of place. And they were already having a hard time dealing with me being black. And You're then, black? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> but you know, they had a hard time with me being black, and then they also, you know, once they found out that I was also Latino, mm. they also had a very hard time with that as well, because at that time, you know, you're not the, s you, you don't look like what they consider to be Latin, so oh, you're yeah, not yeah. in their you box. You have to re redesign exactly. the sort of like mold, yeah. You know, and so like, it's funny, like uh, one of my favorite jokes I always love to tell, and people think it's kind of you know, racist, I guess, in a weird no. way. I know, it's kind of <laughs> weird. But you know, when you live in a place like New York, mm -hmm. it's sort of like seeing people of color yeah. speaking languages other than English is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was on the street and I saw some man speaking German when I first moved here, and it's like, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that black guy speaking German, get out. I didn't know, because, you know, I grew up with just Spanish. I didn't know you could go outside of, you know, Latin America. And, <laughs> and so, of course, you know, like, you know, in New York now, I've oh, learned yeah. that when you're considered black and Latino, they call you a Latino. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're in Texas and you're Hispanic and you're black, they kind of call you a Hispigger. <laughs> and so, 
you have to like, like pick a side. You gotta, <laughs> you know, what's more dangerous? Oh, you know, terrible. So it 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 caused a lot of early confusion in terms of trying to find Yourself. a place to identify with. And then what I learned as I got older is is that I have the opportunity to be any and all of those at once if yeah. I choose to. So Absolutely. those are the things that I bring to the stage, like, and then I bring the sense of whimsy that comes along with being able to be pretty much, you know. Schizophrenic. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so you now know. you're a comedian here in New York City. Yes. Which is which is very very funny, like just you know New York City has such a great um, you know comedy uh, sort of like family. And yeah. It's like you know it's it's because I've I've met a lot of of new gay comedians recently. Right. Because you recently taped a show for Here Networks. <gasps> yes, I yes, did. You did. My television debut. <laughs> <laughs> which that'll be probably hitting the airways in December. Yeah. Yeah. I was really excited about that. That it, you know it was really funny because it was. It wasn't like some of the other particular performances that I've heard people do on television mm -hmm. because, you know, they require to see absolutely everything that you're going to say on stage and they don't want you to say certain words and they don't want you to do certain things. And it was fun going to do that because they didn't ask me what I was going to do. They just said, give me 12 minutes and make it pop. <laughs> I was like. And you certainly did make so it pop. I had, and I had a good time. Thank you. <laughs> this early reviews, people. He's getting me early. Make sure you get your Here TV subscription. I'm no, sure they, is, wanna, they was, want you to do that. I it don't was, know. It was, a, it, was a great, uh, it was a great performance. But, but you also fun. are part of, uh, you work for Sirius. You, you, uh, yeah. you co-host a, uh, a show I'm, on I'm actually Network. the co-host of the uh, morning radio talk show. It's called Out Q in the Morning with mm -hmm. Larry Flick. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like, I guess what we would, uh, if you had to pigeonhole us. If you had to pick he, what, what sort of like you'd feel. What you would feel him. Think. He's basically like the gay Howard Stern. Okay. But the thing Holy, that's. Holy, that's, that's <laughs> a frightening <laughs> thought right which there. Which is great because that makes me the gay Robin Quivers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, see that's, see why you does know. that make sense? And but like the other way, it's kind of like, ooh. No, but you know, but the <laughs> thing about it is that we, on that show, mm -hmm. we get to talk about everything. We don't, we don't have any limitations. Right. Whereas like, you know, I, I listen to Howard from time to time and I notice that there's like a certain place that he kind of has to stay in order to kind of maintain his fan base. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because his fans are kind of, wow. Oh, that's right, because it's also, uh, with, with uh, satellite radio, you kind of have that freedom. Yeah, so you, you have the freedom like, oh. to say and do anything you right, want. Right. And so we, what we've tried to do is try to find a balance between, you know, like we had a very, very heavy political week. So yeah. we spent time talking about politics. Mm -hmm. And then we did fart jokes. And so, you know, it's like we, and then everything else in between, you know, we talk celebrities, we talk, we have all kinds of really fantastic guests. Like, you know, to sit in a room and one minute you're talking to Patti LaBelle, and then. And then she's uh, farting. And what is she? Well, she's got diabetes. Don't come for her. Oh, she's got to worry about see her why, sugar. See why see? I can't be a comedian? You should it's be making fun of her. <laughs> She I is very Patty. important <laughs> to the community. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. But no, but but you know, to sit in a room with Patty LaBelle and have a conversation with her, and you know, your whole life basically, you're like, oh my God, it's Patty LaBelle, <laughs> and she's looking at you and talking about you and having this great time with you, and then she comes back a few months later with LaBelle, which mm -hmm. is now you right know they're yeah. back together yeah. for all of the queens. <laughs> Woo! <yeah. laughs> you know, so she's back together with the group, and she comes back, and the first thing she says to you know her, her uh, cohorts is, that boy is crazy. Oh my God, y'all are gonna love him. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, what did I say? Me? Oh my God, oh my God. Well, you get God. to interview a lot of celebrities on your show. So I get to yeah. talk to lots of celebrities all the time and it's, it's really, it's kind of like a dream job for me. It's sort of like I, I kind of fell into it. I, well, I wouldn't say I fell into it. I kind of showed up and I was present at the right moment and the opportunity presented itself and it was offered to me yeah, it's all about and I took it. Yeah. And, I, and I have been, you know, not to get all emotional, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've been very blessed. Mm. The job has been a really big blessing in my life because it's helped me get a lot more things that I couldn't get before when I was just a struggling comedian working in a hospital. Because right. that's what I used to do. Well, it, gives, to it gives you a voice. It gives you and a it voice. gives me a voice. And, you know, now all of a sudden the things, it, it's very weird because you have to be very careful a lot of times with, with things like radio mm. when you talk to three and four or five million people right. is that, you, you know, you never know what people remember oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what they take to heart. Oh, yeah, you know, sometimes what you think is really funny. Yeah, you, you leave an imprint. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. you leave this weird imprint on folks. And so I, I relish that. I relish that moment. It's like, you know, if, if I have this as an opportunity to be Oprah, mm. I'll take it. 
You hey, know, you know. I'm like low budget. Up there. <laughs> you know, the world can use more <coughs> Oprah. Now, is it true that you are the first out African American in satellite in the satellite radio medium? I certainly am. Wow, it's me it's and Obama. <laughs> A lot of firsts, a lot of firsts. It's a lot of firsts. It's really great, though. I, it's the funniest thing, though, because if you'd have said that it was going to be me, I would have been like, <laughs> it's really? Like, were you, like, checking? Did yeah, you, like, I did. I was <laughs> like, let me <laughs> Google this. Like, like, are you on. sure? What do you mean there's no other one? It's that, me? That's Shut crazy. Up. How did I get this? You know? Oh, that's brilliant. So, you know, and I have to thank, again, I have to thank Larry, the guy that I work with, Larry Flick, because not that he picked me with that to be the intention, Right. He picked me because he likes me, he thinks I'm funny, he and I have a really great rapport, but, you know, it's, it's sort of like it, the intention of doing it the right way has helped it become whatever it has become. Exactly. So, like, yeah. now, you chemistry know. Chemistry is chemistry. The chemistry is chemistry, Absolutely. and the whole mere fact that, you know, because of that, I'm now the first. <laughs> now, you also did a, you did a documentary. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> I love how you just, you can just I hold got, that up. Well, I got my Vanna thing going That's like, hot. Look at like that. You were, you, I went to school for this. This is fantastic. Mira. <laughs> I went to school for this. They do this picture You're like that <laughs> with me and the flowers. It's so fantastic. Mira. The documentary is called Ebony Chunky Love, Bitch Can't Get a Date. Yes. What's that all about? <laughs> oh, is it's, this where I go? You're going to give me Barbara now? Am I going to get? <laughs> if you were a tree. No. Uh, no, I just. If I, I were a tree, I'd be the sad <laughs> oak. <laughs> No, it's the it, weeping willow. You know, it's it, it's a uh, it's like you chose to do this documentary, yeah. and and what's it about? It's about well, your dating you know what? Woes? Well, you know what it is. It, it's the funniest thing. It, I did a one man show about three years ago called Ebony Chunky Love Bitch Can't Get a Date, <laughs> and the whole idea was I was just really angry at my father. Okay. You know, because a lot of times when people forget that comedians can either be very sad or very angry, and from that is where we draw our energy. And um, I did the show. And my friend, uh, Lonnie Tristan Renteria, who's actually the director of the piece, excuse me, Lonnie Tristan. <laughs> Do not forget he's Tristan because he's Mexican. <laughs> um, he, he's a professor. At the time, he was a professor at Seattle University. And I sent him a copy of the one-man show that I completed. And he and a couple of his professor friends who were in the movie sat down, and they had this, like, sociological you know, anthropological discussion about what my comedy material, even though it, in my mind, like I said, I was just angry at my father in some of those scenes, had this hum just ginormous impact about, you know, race and ethnic identity, oh. um, uh, 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 gender conflict, gender issues. Uh, clearly the ebony chunky love is because <laughs> I'm more of a plus size. Full figured. Full figured boy. <laughs> Um, and, and, and then you add the fact that, still single, I was single then, shocker, um, cause look at me, I'm, look at this, I like have a why? boa. Why, 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 would, you why know would this person be single? Why, how could he be single? How, how could He's this so be single? Fun. <laughs> I'm so fun, and that you would think they would come running, but you know what happened, it, it was having them have this discussion talking about my comedy and giving it this whole wave of relevance that, you know, I was like, really? I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> Is that what I said? For real? Well, comedy, you know? comedy has weight to it. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, every, every, every comedian that I know has always told me that, you know, even like when they're working, they're, they're, um, when they're working uh, a show or they're, or they're trying to come up with something, they always tell me that, you know, it, it stems from somewhere. It, it, it's, yeah. got, it's, it's got something going on. It, it does. And, and what's so funny is, is that, you know, because, like I said, my stuff is kind of autobiographical, mm -hmm. you know, with a little level of, of whimsy, um, it, it, it strikes people in such a weird place. Like, you know, we, we've been screening this movie at different festivals, and the first festival we did was in Seattle. And at, at the, the, lesbian film the gay festivals? lesbian film okay. festivals, okay. and and we're going to be doing currently coming up. We're going to be in Chicago. Okay. So it's um, touring. So, it's so touring. we're hitting it. And now we're on Amazon. I can't forget that. Go to Amazon.com oh. if you want. If you can't have me personally, <laughs> you can rent me. I'm available. See, that's, you, don't let that I, well, get you out, know, honey. honey you know, because the bitch got to make some money too, honey. <laughs> it ain't all about getting a date. Cause cash is cute. Fuck that. Anyway, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, they told me not to swear. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good thing my parents are gone. Anyway, um, oh, well, they are, you know. Um, but what was interesting was, like at this stage now, 
it has evolved into such a great thing. This, this little Asian woman came up to me after the show. She says, you know, Keith, um, I'm heterosexual, and I'm a woman, and I'm skinny. And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're skinny. <laughs> Whatever. She goes, and there was a time moment throughout when the film started that I didn't think I was going to, like, identify with anything you had to say. I mean, I came and everything, but I didn't really think I was going to identify <laughs> with anything. And I was like, I, where is this going? Because, you know, you know what I'm saying? You're like, like, you know, like we'll wrap this up because you're making me mad. And so then she goes, she says, but when you talked about how you dealt with your father and because um, I, I talk about uh, a very painful point in my life where I, I had to come to grips with my size and had to come mm -hmm. to grips with the fact that I'm not going to be a size five if I wanted to wear dresses. Because <laughs> um, size zero seems so unreal. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I'll ever be a size 36 in pants again. <laughs> what does a size zero even look like? It's I don't <laughs> understand. What is that? La <laughs> ladies. What is that? What is that like? shit about? I'm, see, I did it again. I'm sorry. It's natural speak. I'm sorry. Please don't be mad. <laughs> but what is that about? You. A size zero. That means you don't exist. <laughs> what happens if you're smaller than a size zero? Do you go negative? I'm a negative three. <clears throat> Gautier makes this in a negative three, oh, did you know? No. Like, what do you do with that? No. But, um, but to have her come up to me and say, you know, like I talked about how, uh, you know, I had to deal with the very first moment of, of actually understanding that I was not a small person mm -hmm. and how I dealt with my father many years later. And she had literally just the day before had had an issue with her mother about her appearance and the way that she looked and she had written her mother like this really long you know five ten page letter I don't know what it was <laughs> some involved piece of drama I was like well girl you should have did it like I did but she she wrote the letter and she said to me that it was the funniest thing that out of everything that you talked about in the movie and everything that came up in the film that that was the one thing that I could really truly look at you and mm -hmm. say oh my god we have something in common and so from that moment on, it has been the weirdest journey. Mm. Having people, you know, like I have people tell me about how they've dealt with their parents. I've had people tell me um, how they've been dealing with their weight issues. I've had people tell me about, you know, it's, it's interesting because I talk about um, an experience that I had with my own community, mm. with my own gay community, that was not positive. Mm. I mean, of course, as a comedian, I found a way to make it funny. Mm. And I, and I, even in the moment, if I remember correctly now, in the moment, I was able to stay calm, but I was so furious because I couldn't believe that within my own community as a gay man that I would have to deal with, you know, racism, prejudice, as well as the rest of the world. Mm. And so the way that I, I focused on that was very funny, which you have to see in the film. Don't give anything away. I don't want to give it all away. <laughs> you know, well, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> Um, now, now with, with that, I mean, it's like there has to be some kind of gratification you get because you basically become a role model. Do yeah, you, do well, yeah. Is that, is that something that, you know, you, you, it's, it, I think it's important to inspire and, and aspire to sort of, yeah. you know, pass uh, what, something on to the next I, generation. What's so strange is, is that you get so tunnel vision when it comes to your career mm -hmm. and it comes to the things that you're trying to do for yourself and you never stop and think that what you're doing can have an impact on other people, right, right. you know, directly or indirectly. And so what's happened now since I've, you know, being the first out African American in satellite radio, <laughs> wow. When you say <laughs> it. Well, satellite radio, I mean, that's. It's the thing, I'm, you know, <laughs> shoot, I'm doing the new thing, honey. I'm not just on regular radio trying to be gay and black, honey. I'm fierce. You got to you gotta subscribe I'm, to you. You got to get to me, honey. <laughs> I'm not cheap. I'm rentable. Ebony Chunky Love Amazon.com. <laughs> Rentable. <laughs> but I'm not cheap, okay? Um, no. But, mm -mm. Excuse me, I'm about to. Sorry, Mike Man. <clears throat> but but the thing is, is that, you know, when you when you do what you do, and hopefully you do it well, mm -hmm. like, you know, right now people are looking at Obama, I should excuse me, President elect Obama. Mm -hmm. Let me be respectful. Mm -hmm. um, people are looking at him now, and people that have generations of time behind them are looking at him and thinking to themselves there was a moment that this would never be possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, pretty much everybody that you've seen on TV, every, you know, family that they keep showing on television is like, you know, I want my son or I want my daughter to look and realize that 
that there is a possibility right. when you look at someone like him. Absolutely. And so I guess in my own world and in, in our own community, there is some young little black gaylet sitting around somewhere trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do? It's like, you know, that's this queen on the radio that's really <laughs> funny. And I think I have that within me to do as well. And, and to know that there's at least a place in the world for you, I think. And that's what's really important. And, you know, I, I, I welcome it but trepidatiously because I'm not perfect, you know? No, I'm not a perfect right person right. and I don't want people, you know, taking what I'm saying or what I'm doing and modeling it for their own lives without really knowing who I am. Mm. Because what you might wind up doing is you may be walking down a path that you're not able to handle. Sure. We all gotta walk our own path. You know, because yeah. I've been to some scandalous places. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you continue to entertain, yeah. that's that's all that's important and that's yeah. how you get your, 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 you'll get your message out there. Now, if people want to see you in our last couple of seconds, okay. you do the comedy circuit here in New York City, right? I do the comedy circuit so here in New York. So they can visit your website, right? Yeah, go to myspace.com slash comedy daddy. I have a listing of all of the upcoming bookings that I have. Um, if you want to find out about getting uh, the uh, DVD for yourself, you can either go to Amazon.com and look up, look up Ebony Chunky Love, or you can go to the website of my uh, director, Torlore, T-O-R-E-L-O-R-E.com. And uh, if you order it nice, maybe I might sign it. Because <laughs> I can't sign it if you get it from Amazon, I'm just saying. <laughs> So and I really appreciate you coming by. Thank you so much for having no, me. You know, in my mind, this was supposed to be like Phil Donahue and Marlo Thomas, and you were supposed to be totally madly in love with me <laughs> by the end of the interview. <laughs> But well, I'll wasn't just she on that it. side of the thing? It wasn't ex ex well, exactly. Well, you would have had to be interviewing me, see? No. Oh, well, well. The, he interviewed her, and he hit on her. That was what's supposed to happen. Is that what happened? That's what happened. Oh. But oh well. Oh, see, well, again, <laughs> bitch can't get a date. Shocker! I try to keep a very a, a huge level of professionalism when I'm when I'm doing yeah, my yeah whatever. <laughs> Don't professional my eye. <laughs> thank you so much for, thank you, for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank and, you. And uh, you can come by anytime. We'd love to see you. And, and you know, and and also the serious show they can catch. Yes. Your oh, oh my God! Don't don't forget serious. <laughs> Go to seriousoutq.com and find out that's the web page. You can find out how you can get some free listen time, and you can also find out how you can subscribe. Seriousoutq.com. And that, folks, is Keith Price. And I'm JC Alvarez. And thank you so much for joining us on Talking About. Hey, to see the interview with me and other celebrities and notables in the community, go to www.talkingabout.info. I-N-F-O. Go now. Stop surfing.